Okay, we're on to air filters. The air filter is something that only needs to be replaced if it's necessary. As the air gets sucked into the air filter and it starts to clog up, it creates a vacuum on the back side, which is what this little gauge is. If the yellow part of this gauge is pulled down towards the red and in the red down there, then it's time to replace the air filter. Replacing an air filter on a 6 liter can be a bit of a challenge, uh, especially if you've never done it before. But I'm going to lead you through the steps right now so that you'll understand how to do it without cussing and, and giving up and just taking it to the dealer, because it's really not that hard if you know how to do it. Okay, you're going to need a pair of good uh, pliers and you're going to need a, a 5 8 nut driver, 8 millimeter nut driver. First thing we need to do is we need to take off this hose right here. Be careful that you don't damage the uh, coolant box, okay? Pop that clamp off, pull the hose loose, set it out of the way. Undo your mass airflow meter. Undo the clip on your filter minder, okay? There's a wire on your filter minder that'll give you an indication on your dashboard, okay? Now we want to get this clamp loose right here. Now we may have to use a wrench on this one because someone put it in there in such a way that you can't get it with a nut driver. So we get this clamp loose right here. Okay, once you have this clamp loose, then pop these clamps off here at the front. And then it's just a matter of wrestling it loose from the clamp here and working the whole filter out. Now the filter sits on a couple pins down on the bottom. So you gotta pull it straight up and kind of rotate it out a little bit to get it out of this spot. We're going to take, going to, when we remove this, we're going to take it with this piece attached to it. Make sure you leave this clamp on. Now, those clamps are missing. Someone lost it once already. But you've got to rotate the filter out and lift it out of the truck uh, to get it loose. Pretty much comes out like that. Uh, it's not a pretty process. It's not a pretty process. You're still going to fight with it. But the idea is to lift it up. Once you get it up, to rotate this part out, and then the whole damn thing comes out and you can separate it from the intake and replace it. While you have it apart, just double check your mass airflow meter doesn't have any fuzz on it. Uh, get any kind of debris that might be on that off. But now that we got it all put back together like this, this one's just been replaced, so we don't really need to replace the filter on this one, but I just want to demonstrate to you how to do this. Basically, installation is the reverse of the process. We're going to set it down in there and then we're going to rotate it into its spot. As you rotate it in and you drop it down, you want to set it in this clamp first, okay? You want to make sure it's in this hole. Before it's all the way pushed down in, you want to make sure that this is attached correctly. But don't hook up the clamps until you press it all the way down and it's little tabs there. At this point, it's just a matter of hooking up your clamps, tightening this clamp, and putting all your wiring back together. Okay, now you got all that done, but don't forget to rehook your little hose back up here because if you don't then your coolant was going to shoot out onto the ground from this little return line that comes from your radiator. Hey that would be a real pain you know we got but we got a fresh air filter but we blew the motor because we overheated it. Look <laughs> make sure you hook this little hose back up. The air filter from Ford again we're going to buy our stuff from Ford but you've already heard me lecture about that. The Donaldson filter system which is basically this is what this is is an outstanding filtration system. We found no difference, no horsepower difference with dyno testing between this air filter and any other aftermarket filter out there. That's just the way it works. There's no reason to have an aftermarket filter. The factory one works just fine. But you have to keep it in good working condition to make sure that you're getting maximum filtration. This is an advanced filtration design. There's really nothing out there better than the factory one. The reason why the air filter is on the checklist and not a periodic item is because your air filter will only be changed if you need to change it, okay, because of this filter minder. You may get five, ten thousand miles out of it only if you're in really rough conditions, you know, dusty and dirty all the time, but you also might get thirty-five, forty thousand miles out of it if you're, you know, on the freeway and not really uh, uh, in dusty conditions. So. The filter is only changed as it needs to be changed. You don't have to change this on a periodic basis. That's why it's not a periodic item, like oil changes and things of this nature. In a power stroke, 
you have two fuse blocks. You have one underneath the hood here, right next to your brakes. And you have another one underneath your dashboard, just to the left of the steering wheel, behind this little box. I like to go through and check all the fuses every single time a truck comes in. On the bigger type fuses here, you can check those by eyeballing. You can actually look at them. But you need to test the others with a test light. And that's a relatively simple thing. With a test light, you hook the one end to a ground, and then the other end, when you touch it to a, uh, a positive, it lights up. And then we go through all the fuses underneath the hood, and we check both sides. On the top of the fuse there, there's a little metal part, and this part right here will light up if the fuse is good. Now some of the fuses may not have power to them, but the ones that have power, we want to go through and check those. The ones that don't have power, we want to just eyeball those and make sure those are okay. By checking the fuses both under the hood and under the dashboard, we will identify potential electrical problems before they become an issue. If you have some fuses bad, you want to go ahead and make a note of that here in your, in your action statement. Uh, this will identify that you need to investigate further into these circuits to see if there's any problem in there. Brake lights and trailer lights are the most common because uh, usually trailers will have something ground on them and then you put them to, the, the, to your trailer uh, connector and, uh, and then it starts burning fuses one out. That's usually the most common one. Diagnostic trouble codes are the way in which the computer in the truck can communicate saying that there's an issue with some system in the truck. You want to check DTCs every time the truck comes in. It, obviously, it doesn't make sense to go out and spend two and three or four thousand dollars on a sophisticated PDS system or IDS system. This is the, the what they call the Palm Diagnostic System for uh, uh, Ford vehicles. I mean, it has a VCM. This is the expensive part, along with the software and the in the handheld. Uh, and it doesn't make sense to do this. I mean, this is a, a sophisticated. A uh, piece of equipment that uh, we use to work on six liters every day, diagnosing, you know, in-depth problems with them. An excellent alternative to the expensive Ford-type uh, diagnostic system is a tuner. Uh, I prefer the SET system because it's uh, programmable uh, from the dashboard. You don't have to add anything to the truck uh, in terms of performance, but it also can give you uh, DTC readings, diagnostic trouble code readings. The beauty of using the tuner, although, even though it has limits, is that you carry it with you. If you're out on the road somewhere and you experience a check engine light, then you can plug this unit in. The plug itself goes into the data link, which is located underneath the dash here, and just follow the directions and pull out any of the diagnostic trouble codes that you may have. The tuning aspect of it will also help you increase fuel economy, so it's a very valuable piece to have. Expect to pay around $400 with tax and everything for one of these units. If you would like more information on that, contact us, either call us at the shop number or contact us through the website and we'll be happy to help you get one of these. Now that we've checked our diagnostic trouble codes and we don't have any in this particular situation, we're going to go ahead and move on to the underneath of the vehicle.